Hello and welcome to the session where we're going to describe the solution of differential equations. We'll begin with looking at some of the simplest forms of the differential equation where we'll just look at a single value of y, so a single function y of x, and we are given the equation that relates the derivative to the values of y and x themselves. So let's understand that uh, to some extent first. So we are saying that there exists some function y in x, which we don't know as yet. So there's a value of y for every value of x. And we don't know what this function looks like. So there exists some function y of x that we are trying to discover. And we don't have y as function of x, but we are given the derivative of y with respect to x as a function of y and x. That means if we have a value of y and x, let's say it, it so happened that we knew one point. If we knew this one point, then we could use this equation to estimate the gradient. Because you see, if you have that point, then you have a value of x and you have a value of y. So you simply stick these two numbers into this function, whatever it is, and then that function is going to return a single number for us. And that number is going to be the gradient of y with respect to x. So if that's the gradient, then let's draw that. We can imagine then at this point that we can draw a line like so. Right? So there's a gradient of y in x at this point. Now, if we know that the gradient near the point is this value, then we could use that to step forward to the next value. So we could say, if we can trust that this is the gradient close to this point, then we could take a small step forward in x and get to the next value of y. And so let's say we step forward by this amount and we estimate that that's the next value of y. So now we have a new point in x and y. And so if we go back to the equation and stick in the new value of x and the new value of y, then we get a new derivative. And so that's telling us the next value of the gradient. So it's saying, for example, that the gradient is now this value. And so we can say again, let's step forward along that, and then that gives us a new value here, and so on. So we can repeat that process many times until we uh, span out this entire solution here. So that's what we can do with an equation of this form. It's not a nice equation like uh, this one. It's not, uh, I should say, it's not as easy an equation as this one where y is simply given to us as a function of x. So this is the simplest possible way to get our function. So we don't have this. What we are given is a description of the changes of y with respect to x. And in fact, part of the reason that people don't really understand these equations is because there's almost an automatic rush to go and solve the equation analytically, as they say, so, or find a symbolic form for that. And actually, this equation in its own right fully describes what's happening in our system. This equation tells us that the change in y with respect to x is given by this function here. And quite often we obtain this function through a mass balance or energy balance or something like that. So we have this description of the change of y in x, and we can step forward um, in x and y until we span out a solution. So that's the approach that our numerical methods take. And in fact, it's more sophisticated than this. Uh, there are certain approximations that we are talking about here, and even here you can already see a small approximation being applied. And uh, there are sophisticated methods which really help you reduce that error and so on. But uh, we won't go into that now. You will meet those concepts later on in the degree. And in fact, uh, what we are describing now is actually not part of this current course on chemical engineering fundamentals. However, if you look at all the equations we've been deriving, uh, there are all these differential equations and uh, it's actually, um, it, it shouldn't, um, uh, you shouldn't be comfortable just having the equations. You should have some sense for how uh, you're going to solve those equations. So this lecture is not really part of the course, but it's uh, important to understand or at least develop the confidence that there is a way to get to a numerical solution. So anyway, 
that's the first point. We can estimate the function y with respect to x by integrating along this derivative, right? So once we understand this process, the rest pretty much falls into place. So let's go back now and look at one of the examples that we've been describing. So in this case, we had the diffusion equation. So we have that the rate of change of the concentration of A is related to the diffusion flux, so the gradient in the diffusion flux. So if you go back and derive the equation, uh, you get this. In fact, you should go back to question two in the modeling case studies uh, set of notes to see how we get this and for which problem we get this. And we are also given the boundary conditions here. And the way that we go ahead and solve this is by proposing a grid space. So we can see that concentration is varying in Z. We know it's also varying in T. Um, but for now, um, well, we are going to come back to time, but let's just talk about Z for now. So we could treat Z uh, for the continuous variable it is, but in a numerical solution, what we are going to do is take our Z axis and discretize it. So that means instead of treating Z as a continuous variable, we are now going to choose selected values of Z. So we can choose the leftmost point where z equals 0 to be z1. We can choose the next point to be 0 plus delta z, which is z2 and, and so on. So at the nth point where z equals L, um, that's zn. And then uh, prior to that, this should be z minus 1. So that's a small error there. That should be a minus 1. So z, minus, uh, z at n minus 1 is a z at L minus delta z. And then if we pick some arbitrary z value in between, so we can call that zi, so we can say that's at the z position, then just to the left of that will be zi minus 1, so that's going to be at z minus delta z, and just to the right of that is zi plus 1, so that's going to be um, z at z plus delta z. So are the neighbors of Z. We are interested in this point Z in particular. So at the moment, we would like to know how are we supposed to estimate what's going to happen next uh, to our concentration here. So we can imagine that in our space, it might be a pipeline or it might be um, any space with the, with the Z, uh, where Z is the dimension of interest. We can imagine that at that point, there's some concentration there. So at position Z, we are defining some concentration. So CA is uh, at position Z. And we want to know now, we know this concentration at position Z at some time T. And we want to know what's going to be the next value of Z. So we know after some time, so let's say this is at time T1, there'll be at some new time, there'll be some new Z position. And then after that, it might be some other um, value or it might come back. So we don't know how the value is going to, to vary over time. So we are talking now at one specific Z position. And as time passes at that position, the concentration is going to move around. So we would like to know how is this concentration varying over time. Now, the only way for us to estimate that is to have available some relationship. And of course, that's the equation that we've derived here. So this equation is telling us that the rate of change of the concentration at any position, so here we should have said this is uh, written at the z position, this is related to the gradient in the other direction. So here we are also going to write in this is at position z. So we are saying here that the rate of change of the concentration at position Z is equal to the second derivative of the concentration multiplied by the diffusivity at position Z. So that's all well and, and good, but then how do we estimate that gradient? Well, we can look at the neighbors to the Z position. So that's why we defined all these, right? So at this position Z, there are these neighbors. So maybe at time T1, the neighbors look like this. 
right so maybe um, the solution looked like this initially or at time uh, t equals 1 right so maybe the concentration profile was like this at time t1 so maybe that was our initial concentration profile and now if we know the values to the left and right of this position z then we can estimate the gradient in the z direction and we do that in almost an obvious way so number one we can estimate the derivative at a position z in this way so we can estimate the first derivative like so right so at position z we could simply ask for the value of the concentration just to the right and then the difference uh, of that from the current concentration all of that divided by delta z we know that is a numerical estimate of the derivative and uh, we we would say this is biased to the right side because this is taking the derivative only looking at the position to the right and comparing it to the current position alternatively we could take the left side uh, derivative by taking the current position minus the value at the position just to the left so that's another way to estimate the derivative and of course it's best to average those two so we could estimate the derivative just to the right and then the der derivative just to the left and then we could average those two derivatives and say that's a fairer approximation to the derivative at this point so you can see uh, it's just my bad drawing that it, it curved like that but it should be more like this so you can see this derivative is uh, is well estimated by taking this derivative and this derivative so that's what we do here if you just take the average there then the formula looks like this so that's how we can estimate the first derivative then to estimate the second derivative right because if you look at it that's what we actually need here we need the second derivative so we need to numerically estimate this well we recognize that the first derivative is uh, um, or rather the second derivative is simply the derivative of the first derivatives so we could say that the second derivative uh, d is d dz of dca dz and dca dz we've already uh, said uh, well uh, of course that's the function so we could write this d dz like this we could say uh, the derivative at i plus one minus the derivative at i divided by delta z so then um, if you expand if you substitute for the numerical estimate to dc dz here then it looks like this and then uh, you can divide through by that delta z and then this is uh, a formula for the derivative um, that's um, yeah that that's an estimate to the second derivative at position i and if you think about what this means this is telling us that our neighboring values determine the gradient the second gradient and hence that's going to influence the change in the time direction so when we substituted for d2ca dz squared you can see that it depends on ci plus one and ci minus one in other words the second derivative depends on the concentrations here and here right we sort of already knew that but now we can see from the governing equation that that change is now related to the change in time at position z in other words the next value at position z de is determined by the values at the neighboring uh, values so that's the nature of a partial differential equation that you have a certain change in a certain direction right in this direction for instance well I, I should really be pointing into the page so you have a certain um, a certain change in a particular direction which is related to the changes in the other directions so that's a partial differential equation the the gradient in one direction depends on the gradient in the other direction right and you can see that from the equation directly you can see the rate of change with time depends on the gradients in the z direction so to numerically solve this we can now simply substitute for um, these uh, uh, estimates so we can replace uh, these 
rigorous derivatives by numerical approximations like so and uh, we go ahead and do that in the code here so if you have a look at the code for this problem you can see we are estimating the um, yeah the rate of change with time in terms of the neighboring values here so we uh, use exactly the same equation that we've just referred to and then uh, we we go ahead and solve that as a differential equation now you see earlier where we had talked about the numerical integration of some function y in x we were talking about a single value of y now actually in this case we need to solve all these values of y so we can regard each of these z positions as giving us a new function so at each z position we have a new function y of x and so when we talk about this integration you should actually think about this integration as happening into the page so we are integrating up and down here in this uh, in this direction and we can see it also depends on what happens in this direction so each z position is giving us a new function that we have to integrate and that is then going to span out the solution that we see here right so that's just a quick overview of what we mean when we talk about numerical estimates to derivatives